I'm Simon Schillicke, and I'm going to be talking about FASM, Lightweight Isolation for Efficient Stateful Serverless Computing. So this work is part of my PhD in the Large Scale Data and Systems Group at Imperial College London under the supervision of Peter Pitsuk. So we're all familiar with the serverless vision for big data, which is where users upload their application and data into the cloud where it's executed as thousands of concurrent serverless functions. Now this leads to cheap, highly scalable big data processing. If we look under the hood of a typical serverless platform, we find that functions are executed across a cluster of hosts with their shared state stored in some external storage like S3. Now functions are isolated from each other by a container or VM and operate on their own copy of this shared data so this architecture underpins all of the major frameworks today with a slight variation on the nature of the container or VM. Now, <clears throat> the containers themselves may have a footprint of several megabytes of memory and add a few hundred milliseconds of latency. And of course, this is important when we think of functions themselves that may only run for a few hundred milliseconds and actually have much smaller memory footprints. So, our first problem here is the isolation overheads associated with all these containers. Now we're churning through thousands of functions a second, so we're just repeatedly paying these overheads. The second problem is inefficient state sharing, where we see functions are duplicating all this data in their own containers. And this results in what's been called the serverless data shipping architecture, where data is moved to code rather than vice versa. Vice, vice versa. Both of these problems grow in significance as we increase parallelism and the size of our state, which is particularly undesirable when we're working with highly parallel big data applications. Now, existing work has attempted to address both of these problems in a number of ways. We can, first of all, reduce isolation overhead between functions from the same tenant by letting them share containers. Now this spreads isolation costs, but the containers themselves result in, uh, sorry, this results in the containers themselves being bigger. And so we lose our ability to do fine grained scaling. We can add snapshot and restore to our functions, which reduces the startup latency, but it doesn't change the underlying memory footprint. We can replace containers with software based isolation, uh, which can provide memory safety with orders of magnitude lower overheads but doesn't really give us the full level of isolation we need for serverless. So to improve in efficient state, we can add extra services to our containers. These might be caching layers, message buses, and local storage processes. And this will reduce the network and latency overhead, but still doesn't give us the zero copy sharing that we need. Furthermore, adding these services increases the isolation overhead associated with the containers. We can execute functions on the storage server itself, thus moving code to data, but this hasn't been done on more than a single host in the serverless context. Finally, we can just make the external storage faster, which of course reduces latency, but doesn't really address the underlying problem. So how do we make our state sharing more efficient without breaking isolation? First of all, we could just get rid of the container and rely on the operating system using some kind of multi-threading model with shared memory. Now this gives us great performance, but we're operating in a multi-tenant environment and we may have some bad actors. So what we really need is to selectively share memory between some functions, but isolate this memory from others. And so accordingly, we need an isolation mechanism that gives us fine-grained control over memory. A good way to get this fine-grained control, as well as reducing overheads, is with WebAssembly. Now WebAssembly is a secure intermediate representation that gives us lightweight memory safety via software fault isolation. It's used by Fastly and Cloudflare in their edge computing platforms, and it's also been used by Crosslet to replace Docker. So while this is a good start, there's still a couple of challenges. Uh, the first one is that we need to be able to relax this isolation dynamically at runtime to share memory between our functions. Uh, we then need to provide an additional virtualization layer where we can still give functions access to the underlying host and provide some serverless specific APIs. Once we have managed to efficiently share state on a single host, we then need to think about scaling it up. And obviously this means distributing things across hosts. 
To do this, we introduce a two-tier state model. Uh, two-tier state, unsurprisingly, has two tiers. The first one is a local tier where things can share memory. And the second is a global tier backed by some external storage, which lets us synchronize these copies of state across hosts. Um, again, this is a good start, but we've got a couple of challenges to overcome. So the first one of these is hiding this new complexity from the user. The second one is then minimizing our new class of overheads associated with synchronization. And finally, we want to make sure that we actually reduce duplication wherever possible. And so we want to optimize for putting lots of functions on the same host with our scheduler. So now we present FASM, uh, our solution to these problems and the associated challenges. FASM provides lightweight isolation in the form of FASLets. FASLets are a new thread-based mechanism uh, built on WebAssembly, and they give us the multi-tenant isolation we need with low overheads. FASLets also support shared memory regions, which can be used to efficiently share state between co-located functions. FASM uses a two-tier state architecture, as we discussed, to synchronize these local replicas across hosts. And finally, we can further reduce isolation overheads with FASM's snapshot and restore mechanism, which is called proto-FASLets. So we'll go into the detail on the contributions of FASM in relation to our two original problems, namely isolation overheads and inefficient state sharing. So first we'll talk about FASLets. Now FASLets use WebAssembly for memory safety. And WebAssembly itself uses a simple linear memory model where all addresses are expressed as offsets from zero. The stack, data, and heap all exist within this linear memory, and this can grow up to four gigabytes. Uh, because this is just a linear array of bytes, we can hold it in a standard vector, and we can then fiddle with this to get the fine-grained control over the memory that we want. Ultimately, this will give us the flexibility to start sharing memory between our functions. So in addition to memory safety, FASLets also provide isolated access to the underlying host. Now functions can only do uh, perform this access through the FASLET host interface, which provides a minimal layer of virtualization for standard POSIX-like system calls, as well as a serverless-specific API. Each FASLET executes in a thread, which is assigned to a C group, which is used to ensure fair access to CPU. FASLets provide networking via a virtual network interface, which is in its own network namespace. And then file system access is provided using a subset of standard file IO system calls, which are implemented according to WASI, the WebAssembly system interface. And WASI gives us a lightweight capability-based model for isolating this access to the file system. So the host interface is there to give functions isolated access to the underlying host. So it's really important that we keep it minimal to reduce complexity and risk. The API has two main responsibilities. The first of these is accessing serverless stuff, and the second is doing POSIX-like system calls. So the serverless part covers two main subcategories. Uh, the first of these is a fork join model for uh, invoking and awaiting other serverless functions. And the second is a low-level API for interacting with FASM's state. Now, FASM needs to support a range of dynamic languages, which in turn means we need to support dynamic language runtimes. So things like CPython require loading stuff dynamically at execution time, and so we introduce standard dynamic linking system calls. Importantly, the libraries loaded through these are also WebAssembly modules and are under the same isolation guarantees as the functions that load them. And then the rest of the POSIX like calls are associated with memory management, networking, and file IO. Now, <clears throat> proto FASLets are how FASM does snapshot and restore. So a master snapshot for each function is held in the central proto FASLET store. And each, co sorry, each host can load any of these snapshots and use them to spawn new FASLets. Once on the host, these snapshots are held in copy on write memory, therefore further reducing the memory footprint of the FASLets created. Now, uh, each proto FASLET snapshot uh, captures the full execution state of the function, including its linear WebAssembly memory, 
uh, the function table and some other associated metadata to do with WebAssembly, and the underlying binary and the machine code that we've generated off the back of that. Now, none of this snapshot is tied to any underlying operating system primitives, so each protofazlet snapshot can be restored on any host in the cluster. Protofazlets also let users provide arbitrary initialization code, which gets executed before the snapshot is taken. Now, FASM uses this internally for Python functions, where it's uh, sorry, where Python functions are executed from a snapshot that contains a pre-initialized C Python runtime that can be restored in under a millisecond. At a minimum, uh, restoring a proto fazlet adds about 500 millise sorry 500 microseconds of latency and 90 kilobytes of memory footprint. Now onto the problem of inefficient state sharing and FASM's state architecture. So we can take a top-down view of this, first looking at the programming model, then talk about how fazlets implement shared memory, then we'll discuss the two-tier push and pull approach, and the finally how we achieve serialization-free data transfers. So here we have some Python code for distributed machine learning training, and like a lot of these kinds of algorithms, it spawns lots of parallel functions to update a shared weights vector. Now the FASM programming model centers around some high-level object-oriented abstractions. These hide the details of the two-tier state from the user and encapsulate further optimizations to reduce synchronization. Here we've got our training data held in a couple of read-only matrices. Because they're read-only, the underlying runtime knows that it just needs to load the data once per host and do no further synchronization. The weights vector is held in an asynchronous vector class, which gives the user slightly lower level access to the two-tier state and lets them choose when they want to synchronize. This is really useful in this example, where we want to adopt um, some flexible consistency to improve the performance of the algorithm. A locally shared state is held in normal shared memory. So we can just use standard pointers and normal programming contra constructs like array indexing. This sort of construct can also be optimized by FASM, uh, as shown here with the array index on the columns of the matrices. Now, because each function is only accessing a subset of the columns, the runtime can choose to synchronize only the necessary data for each function, therefore further reducing overheads. To make it easier to distribute applications, we've tried to introduce some intuitive markup, here shown with the serverless function annotation, and this approach to fork join parallelism, which ends up looking a lot like a multi-threaded application. Now we'll go over how Fazlet's share memory without breaking our existing memory safety guarantees. So each host runs one or more Fazlet's, which all share a single process memory. Each function's memory is private and backed by a contiguous chunk of this process memory. When Fazlet's need to share memory, each one will extend their linear memory vector and map the new pages onto shared pages of the process memory. This maintains the linear address space seen by the function, but remaps some addresses to the underlying shared region. Many shared regions can be added by each fazlet, and we end up with a kind of patchwork of shared and private regions. But crucially, each function still sees a linear address space. Now we'll look at how FASM's push and pull approach can achieve global synchronization, but still offer us variable consistency. So all state is accessed with a key value abstraction, where each tenant has their own unique global key space. Fazlets on a given host share data in the local tier, but can push updates to the global tier, where they're accessible to other Fazlets on other hosts, which can uh, sorry, accordingly pull uh, those values into their own local tier. So this approach can be used to implement strong consistency, but we can also provide flexible consistency by varying the pushing and pulling between the tiers. Now we'll talk about how FASM achieves serialization-free transfer of arbitrarily complex data structures. So FASM's global tier is backed by a distributed key value store, and all values here and elsewhere in the system are just simple byte arrays. Now because the function's memory is also represented as a byte array, it makes it really easy for us to transfer data around the system without serialization. When fazlets need to replicate a subsection of a state value, they can then just synchronize the relevant subsection of the larger byte array. And now because we're representing everything as byte arrays, 
It means we can store arbitrarily complex data structures created in any programming language. <clears throat> so now we'll talk about our evaluation of FASM. To assess the effectiveness of our solution, we aim to answer the following questions. First, how do FASLets compare to containers in their isolation overheads? Second, can FASM reduce the cost and training time in distributed machine learning? Three, can FASM improve throughput and reduce latency when serving machine learning inference decisions? And four, does FASLET isolation affect the performance of dynamic languages? To do this, we compare FASM to Knative, a state-of-the-art serverless platform based on Kubernetes. So first of all, we compare Docker, FASLETs, and Proto-FASLETs on some different overhead metrics by repeatedly executing a no-op function with a cold start. We see that Docker takes longer and spends more CPU cycles than FASLETs and Proto-FASLETs due to the more heavyweight isolation it provides. Restoring FASLETs from proto-FASLETs takes around 500 microseconds and spends fewer than 1,000 CPU cycles. So this is several orders of magnitude improvement on Docker. Now using proto-FASLETs reduces the memory footprint of FASLETs below 100 kilobytes due to its use of copy on write memory. This is around a 15 times improvement on Docker, which even with a minimal container image can have a memory footprint over a megabyte. Our final measure is something we're calling density, which is just the maximum number of concurrent functions we can run on a single host. This is around 8,000 for Docker, which gets limited by our host's memory. Uh, correspondingly, we can achieve over 100,000 concurrent proto-fuzzlets on the same machine, showing about a 12 times improvement. Now it's important to consider the ability to churn through functions, i.e. how quickly we can cycle through them, and therefore how, um, how much underlying utilization we can get from our shared infrastructure. So to measure this, we perform increasing numbers of cold starts per second on a single host, and measure the time taken to initialize and execute a no-op function. Again, we do this with Docker, Fazlets, and proto Fazlets, and we see that while Docker takes a couple of seconds at low throughputs, FASM, sorry, FASLETs achieve the same thing in around five milliseconds. As we increase the uh, number of functions executed per second, both of them get throttled with Docker around three or four containers a second and FASLET at around 700 functions a second. Proto FASLETs, on the under, other hand, maintain sub millisecond initialization up to around 5,000 creations per second, and so we can get about a thousand times increase versus Docker. Now we want to see whether locally shared state can impact the training time on a machine learning model when we execute it in FASM and Knative with increasing numbers of parallel functions. So we see here that Knative gives us an initial reduction in training time as the number of functions increases, but at a certain level these improvements level off as the underlying hosts start to experience more memory pressure due to the amount of duplicated state. Now, FASM achieves lower training times at all levels of parallelism and shows increasing improvements as we raise this level of parallelism. This again levels off uh, as the benefits from distribution are outweighed by the synchronization overheads. Ultimately, we see around an 80% reduction in training time. So to see how reduced data shipping affects network transfers, we measure the volume of data sent and received during the same machine learning training. As we increase parallelism in Knative, the network transfers increase accordingly as shared state is shipped to more and more serverless functions. In FASM, we see an increase, but at a much slower rate, and this is the benefit of sharing local copies of state rather than duplicating them across functions. Now, to see how proto FASLETs affect latency in a user-facing application, we look at an application serving machine learning inference. Uh, we measure the round-trip latency as we increase the throughput and do this for a few workloads with varying numbers of cold starts. In Knative, we can see that fewer cold starts means higher throughput, and this is limited at around 100 uh, requests a second with 5% cold starts. Interestingly, all of these workloads are essentially equivalent in FASM, as proto-FASLETs add a negligible latency compared to the running time of the function itself. <clears throat> 
However, here we must note that FASM actually incurs a slight latency increase due to the lack of BLAS support in WebAssembly, which native code otherwise benefits from. However, we see FASM gives us an increased maximum throughput of around 120%. So we see a similar story when we look at tail latencies. Uh, decreasing the number of cold starts decreases the tail latency in Knative. Um, but FASLETs uh, give us around a 90% reduction in this tail latency owing to their negligible cold start latencies. So when executing functions with a dynamic language runtime like CPython, we're making heavy use of standard POSIX -E system calls and file IO. Now in FASM, this means we're exercising the host interface a lot, and we want to see if this affects performance of our application. So to do this, we ran a distributed Python linear algebra application in both FASM and Knative. And we can see that FASM gives us no real significant overheads, even as we increase the size of the underlying data. Now to dig deeper into the basic overheads, we ran two sets of micro benchmarks inside uh, FASLETs and natively. One set of benchmarks is Polybench, which is written in C, so we can compile it directly to WebAssembly. Now here we see mostly native-like performance with a couple of noticeable overheads, particularly where WebAssembly loses uh, underlying loop optimizations that native code would otherwise benefit from. Uh, our second set of benchmarks is the Python performance benchmark. Here we see a much more pronounced overhead on certain uh, benchmarks, where the WebAssembly code is suffering a bit on big integer arithmetic. Now this is pretty much in line with some work from ATC last year, which showed that in more complex applications, the overheads due to WebAssembly can be compounded. However, it's always worth noting that with a distributed serverless application, there's going to be a lot of different sources of latency. And so these don't sort of manifest um, as significantly as they do here. So in summary, we show that FASM makes serverless faster and cheaper. We argue that current container-based platforms show two main problems, the first being excessive isolation overheads and inefficient state sharing. FASM reduces these overheads with FASLETs and proto-FASLETs, and FASM also supports efficient locally shared and globally synchronized state to address this inefficient state sharing. FASM is publicly available and open source on GitHub via the link below. Thank you for listening.